I don't think that this impeachment trial is going to be won or lost by what either side says. I think this impeachment trial, first of all, is a, is, is, is a joke. But I think that ultimately it's going to be decided about upon what is in the Constitution. And the Constitution is very clear. And the United States senators that have this opportunity before them have to make a decision, which is, are they going to do something that's unconstitutional, which is try to convict someone who is not a sitting president of the United States, because the Constitution is clear on how they describe what impeachment is and to whom impeachment should be applied to. And Par Look, but Paris, but Paris, we did have sure. we did have six Republicans joining Democrats today and saying that the trial is indeed constitutional, including Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy, who before today voted that the trial was unconstitutional. Do you think that Democrats made a compelling compelling case today? I don't think that the Democrats made a compelling case on the constitutionality of convicting a former president, a private citizen, uh, as if he was the sitting president of the United States. What I do think that they did was do a good job of using manipulated video and splicing it together Hollywood style to create a narrative of with voiceovers, editing out selectively what President Trump said, did not say, other people said, did not say or saw into this video that gave the perception of something that did not happen because that was a essentially a false video. It was manipulated. It wouldn't be admissible in any court of law. And so ultimately, these uh, senators have to decide if they're going to convict. And I think the Constitution is clear about convicting a private citizen of the United States yes, for but also, impeachment. But also, the president takes an oath of office from the day he becomes president until the day that his term is over. And this insurrection happened before President Trump's term was over. So it does fall within that parameter. The impeachment trial does not. If this was such a big deal and such an important thing and such a, a matter of urgency, Speaker Pelosi would not have sat for over 20 days with the article of impeachment in the House chamber. She sat on it because it wasn't an urgent matter. How if it was so think, urgent. How else do you think they were to, in their, their eyes, hold the president accountable for things that we did hear him say? The intent is questionable. According to uh, President Trump's attorneys, they're saying that his intent of fight like hell wasn't to incite an insurrection, but that is what we saw happen. So what other legal ramification do you suggest the Democrats have taken? Well, it's not a legal issue. This is a political issue, number one. Number two, the president did say march peacefully uh, down there, which the House But he also House said managers fight like hell. He also said that. Well, you know what? I fight like hell for my people for the black community on the Republican side. So if you if you consider that an insurrection, I think you can look at what's, what Maxine Waters said, what AOC has said, and other Democrats but have said. But nothing, nothing and, that and, they and said ended with six people dead, including police officers and the U.S. Capitol being taken over. Nothing that the Democrats have said have led to that. So that's not a good I comparison to, I there. To I beg to differ. There have been incidents where people have been killed there have, have we been seen an incident where have from been what a harassed. Democrat said that led to, and, and this is an honest question, that led to the yeah. insurrection of the U.S. Capitol? We have not. That is a fact. We have not seen that. Nor have I, nor have I seen anything that the, or heard anything that President Trump said that led to an insurrection. I think if you want to hold someone accountable, hold the people accountable who broke the law that day. And we all find what they did deplorable, disgusting. And it should never have happened. And we all need to tone down our the temperature, tune down the temperature, turn it down, watch our rhetoric, and think about what we say and how we say it in this in this culture that we call council culture. How this politics of personal destruction that is going throughout the nation right now, especially on the Democrat side. But President Trump cannot be held responsible for the actions of individuals because he did not incite a riot and this trial is unconstitutional.
And that, that is the argument the trial of... is taking place right now while mm -hmm. he is not the president of the United States. But the Capitol insurrection happened while arguments. he was president. We have to keep that in mind. So you brought up a good point. That is the, the president's, former president's argument, his lawyers, um, that it is unconstitutional, that he is no longer president. They're saying that this trial is dividing the country. Is this a case of the pot calling the kettle black? Because for four years, we've seen a lot of division in this country. So why is this the, the defense now? Well, we could just, you, if you want to look forward, that's fine. I'm mean, going to look backward, that's fine. But I want to look forward. President Joe Biden said he wanted to unify, unify the nation. He said he wanted to be a unifier. So by holding this trial, that is not unifying the 74, over 74 million people who voted for President Trump, millions of which look like you and look like me. But what about, what about the, the 70 plus million who voted for President Biden, who do believe that this trial should move forward? What about them? The, the, the trial can move forward, but it's unconstitutional and he should not be convicted. That's what it boils down to. At the end of the day, what we should be focused on is the fact that the Democrats are not doing the job and doing things for the American people. Right now, as we speak, people around the dinner table are not focused on whether or not a private citizen should be convicted for something that for, for the actions of other people. They're focused on stimulus. They're focused on their jobs. They're focused on school, the schools not being open. They're look, if they're a Medicare Part D senior citizen and you have diabetes and your insulin could be $35 right now because of the action that President Trump took, Denard. But because of President Biden, Mr. Denard, they, it's now still three hundred dollars because they stopped. The I'm rule glad you did bring. I, I'm Trump. glad you did mention the stimulus check because Democrats did vote to move forward with the one point nine trillion dollar bill, where Republicans were trying to drastically shrink that. So um, you just well, brought they're up. certainly not doing it today. If, yeah. you, if you're if you want your if you want your viewers to talk about the, the stimulus then they're not voting we on can it talk right about, now because we of can this talk sham about trial. both we can talk about the stimulus and we can talk about the trial that is also happening because though they both are happening simultaneously right now but the senate can't do both the senate right now is not taking up stimulus they're not talking about the issues for the american people they're not doing it because they're focused on this political charade and not being about the business this, of the american people okay so so While this is about this debate Mm -hmm. This is about the, the impeachment trial because, yes, the stimulus checks and, and the stimulus bill is something that is ongoing. And we know that just last week they moved forward with it. Um, but in terms of the trial itself, what can we expect from President Trump's legal team? Sources say that the president, former president, is upset, unhappy with his team's argument. We've heard other Republicans come out and say that they seem disorganized and they didn't have their argument together. What can you expect from them tomorrow? I expect for them to lay out the constitutionality of uh, of this case, meaning that it is unconstitutional, number one. Number two, I believe that they're going to highlight the things that Democrats have said, to, hold, to because if you want to hold this president, the former president, accountable for things that, were, that, that they, they think he said, then you can look at past comments and say, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. And I think that they're going to focus on trying to end this, this trial quickly because we already know that the Senate does not have the votes to convict. And so it was, it, was, it was over before it started. It's a complete waste of time. It's a complete waste of money. And while they're doing this political charade, American people are not getting the relief that they need because Senate Democrats are refusing to focus on what really matters, which is the okay. will of the people. That, that we know is not true. We know that the the... Lawmakers in Washington are still working towards that $1.9 trillion stimulus bill simultaneously. We can't say that it's not. We can't say we can't say that it's not happening. You, you can't are say you that they're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. You can't say that Senate, it's not okay, happening. Okay. When did the Senate take? Hold on. When did the Senate take up the issue of stimulus today? When did they vote? Didn't they not vote to move forward on the $1.9 trillion bill last week? Um, with Senator Kamala, with, with Vice President Kamala Great. Harris last taking week. that tie-breaking vote on that. Did they not do that? Do you recall that? Last week. But do you recall do. that last happening? Week. Exactly. What part of what I do last week? Exactly. What I'm talking about is this week. What are they doing this week to help the American people out outside of this partisan charade known as impeachment? Nothing. We heard we, President. We heard President Biden focused on. Them. 
We heard pri oh, President Biden on. today. Okay, no, we're on. still talking about it. We heard pri President Biden say very clearly today that he himself is not watching or interested in the impeachment trial, but he is moving forward with his agenda items, the top of which is the coronavirus relief. So we did hear that, and that is happening. So we can't act like that is not <laughs> happening at all. Like literally. Let's do civics. Let's do let's do civics one on one for the audience. The president cannot. The president cannot enact law. That is the Congress. And right now, the Congress is not doing their job. What the president can do is executive orders and, and executive action. And so in those executive orders and executive action, what has he done and what is he doing? Well, let's talk about it. He's mm -hmm. trying to destroy small businesses like black small businesses, forcing them to have a, a mandatory $15 minimum wage when they can't afford it. He has listen, ended the opportunity to have insulin at $35 a month rather than $300, which it Come is right on. now because they stopped the executive action that President Trump listen, did. And we know he's we killing jobs. We cannot act like he's lawmakers, lawmakers can, and in fact they do, handle several different things at the same time. Let's not act like just because they're doing a Senate impeachment trial that nothing else can be done, that it pauses everything else. That is simply not true. Then, I, then tell your audience what else they did today. We have to go to break really quickly, but we, wanna, we, want, <laughs> we want you to stay with us, if you will. Yes, I see you're laughing. If you, you're more than welcome to stay with us if you'd like. So after this quick break, Stay with us. We'll be right back. We are back now with Paris Denard, media advisor for Black Foreign Affairs for the Republican National Committee. We're talking about everything. We brought you on to talk about the impeachment. We got into talking about COVID relief and all of that. We want to continue that conversation. But I also want to ask you, as a former board yeah. member for Black Voices for Trump, um, as Republicans look mm -hmm. to win in 2022, some would say they're isolating black voters. I'm sure you would disagree. What is the plan for Republicans to bring in more black people, black voters? Well, that's a very good question because there's no doubt that President Trump expanded the party. Uh, he doubled his support from black with black women. He got uh, he increased his vote share by at least eight points with the uh, overall black vote. And for the first time since 1960, he got uh, the, the highest percentage from Republican of non-white voters. The president and the policies of the Republican Party and, and his administration expanded the base, expanded the party, and we are proud to have two new black members of Congress, one from Florida and one from Utah, uh, Burgess Owens and Byron Donalds uh, in the Congress. The focus right now for us to, is to continue on to address the issues that were done, criminal justice reform, looking at things like the Black Economic Empowerment Plan, that was called the Platinum Plan. That was a very good plan, and there's things in it that should be implemented no matter who's in the White House because it's sound, good policy. And it's, it's highlighting the contrast of what's what we see happening. That's why I, I, I am so passionate when it comes to things like opening up the schools because that's disproportionately hurting uh, single parents right now. It's, it's, it's hurting the Black community. If you are not in a position to work from home, but you have to take care of your children, you can't work. But also, and the longer you don't be also what's hurting the black community is COVID-19. Black people dying at six times the rate as white people. And so some parents, That's we right. actually had some pa black parents on our air yesterday who said, uh, yes, I would like for my kids to be in school, but not until it is safe to do so. And that is a concern well, for, for a lot of parents that it is not safe for them to send their kids back to school. Well, that's just not true. The, 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 the president, President Joe Biden's own CDC director, said that the data and the science and the facts show that there's extremely low transmission rate for uh, in, in children. Private schools have been open for, for many months now. And you saw the pleading of the mayor of Chicago, Mayor Lightfoot, saying, we've got, you're letting me down. We need to open these schools because the data does not support keeping the schools closed. And so for black parents out there right now, trust the data, trust the science, trust the facts. And the facts show that the, the, the rate for a child to child uh, transmission of COVID is extremely, 
low. But Mr. So Denard, we, we also we also know that zero. we also know that children can't teach themselves. So it's not just about the children. It's about teachers, staff, administrators who are adults who can and do get COVID and who are dying from it as well. So so that's a that's a concern. And I, I agree with you. A lot of parents do agree with you that the uh, achievement gap is widening with black children, black and brown children having to learn virtually because it simply isn't working very well. A lot of people agree with you on yeah. that point, um, for sure. Yeah. Um, it's not working at all. That's the issue of technology, it's the issue of food. The money's absolutely. gonna run out. And so these children need to eat, they need to have the technology, and it's, it's, not, it's not a good situation. And so I think for, for teachers unions, get out of the way, make sure that we have to do what we can to get the teachers vaccinated if that's important, or have them wear one or two, three, four or five masks, uh, if that's what you have to do. But we've got to think about the students. This is about the students. And when you see suicides amongst children, when, when you see failing grades amongst students K through 12, we have a massive problem on our hands and we've and, got to address it. And I, I don't think that, again, it's not an issue of, of people want kids to be out of school. No, people want to be able to return to work and into buildings, school buildings uh, safely. And that is what uh, the issue is. I want to take it back to something that you said, how the Republican Party has expanded under Trump and all these influx of black voters. We know that the majority of black voters, that's just a fact, have voted for Democrats. So is there a plan for Republicans outside of saying, oh yeah, Trump expanded our base to black voters. Is there a, a concrete plan on how you guys are going to possibly reverse that in 2022? Well, I, look, we I, I'm not going to back away from the fact that we're proud that we, we did do it well and better than expected when it came to the black vote. That's just a fact. Doubled the numbers when it comes to black women, expanded the party when it comes to blacks overall, 20 some odd percent when but it comes to black But the majority of black voters, but, including black women, are voting Democrats. So what are you guys doing in that regard yes. to, to welcome yes. in black voters? Uh, it's, it's to continue to welcome them in because my point is, President Trump did better than, than than all the past Republican presidents in modern history, number one. Point two, at the Republican National Committee, we are engaging uh, with black media every single day. That's part of what my role is as senior communication advisor for black media affairs. Uh, we are we run black ads and black newspapers. We are regularly messaging with them. Is it enough? Availing myself and our... Is that enough? We're hold, hosting events. We are... We are we, we believe is that, that voter registration is Is that connecting with black voters? Is that con as a whole, is that connecting with black voters? I think showing up is part of the thing that you have to do. I'm here at your show today. I'll come on every night of the week if I have to. We would because love I to think have it's you. important to, to I'll, I'll come on, to bring the message of what the party is doing, number one, but highlighting the contrast between good policy and bad policy. I don't think enough people are talking about this Medicare Part D situation. There are a lot of black union workers who supported the Keystone Pipeline because they knew it was gonna create jobs for them. And so when you have a job killing bill, that is a problem. But also so we have, we have a lot of people with the Keystone the Pipeline that highlight the environmental issues inherent in that as well. My producers tell me that we have to wrap. We've gone far over our time, but thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Paris Denard. Thank you for having me. Be on any time. All right. We'll be right back after this quick break. <laughs> 